All right, let's look at this problem from our thermodynamics module. Um, this is from one of our practice sets. Given that the enthalpy change is, and there's your number, the entropy change is for a given reaction at 25 degrees Celsius, what is the Gibbs free energy change? You want to be able to calculate or look at the formula that shows the relationship between enthalpy change, entropy change, and Gibbs free energy change. And that formula is delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Now, this is a very useful formula. We find it showing up as our starting point for a lot of calculations. Um, so it's a useful one to have handy. You can have this on a piece of paper sitting right next to you as you're taking your quiz, as you're taking your exam. You do get to use resources. And so I encourage you to have this formula handy. Maybe even have a problem worked out, like this problem worked out right next to you as you're taking your exam and your quiz. We do have to watch our units on this one, though. Um, we've got an enthalpy change of negative 196.0. That is in kilojoules. We've got an entropy change. That's our delta S of 125.7. That's in joules per Kelvin. We're looking for, oh, we've got a temperature at 25 degrees Celsius. You'll notice that the other temperature unit in this formula that, that is involved with the delta S unit is Kelvin. We are going to have to change this to Kelvin. You'll recall from Chem 1, to change your temperature from Celsius to Kelvin, you add 273. You might add 273.15. That's fine. Typically, for almost all the problems I ask, if you add 273, you're going to get the correct answer rounded appropriately. Of course, in a problem, if it gives you the temperature conversion, make sure you use any information that it's given. So we're going to call this 298 Kelvin. And delta G is what we're looking for. And as we look at the multiple choice answers, we'll notice these are all in kilojoules, which means I'm probably going to want to go and change this guy to kilojoules, which you remember from Chem 1, to change from joules to kilojoules. I multiply with the ratio where the joules will cancel, and I'll be left with kilojoules, and there are a thousand joules in one kilojoule. So this is 0.1257 kilojoules per Kelvin. All right, at some point, I do have to match my units. Now, I could have changed my kilojoules to joules for delta H, plugged it all in, but then I would have had to have gone back to kilojoules to get my final answer. You have a delta H that is negative, and that is a driving force for a spontaneous reaction. <clears throat> you have a delta S, uh, sorry, messing this up, that is positive. That is a driving force for a spontaneous reaction. Since we have both driving forces for a spontaneous reaction, I do expect this reaction to be spontaneous, which means I do expect the delta G <clears throat> to be negative. Now, if I have one driving force and not the other, I cannot necessarily predict at this temperature whether or not it's going to be spontaneous. But since I do have both driving forces, I can predict that it will be spontaneous. All right, all that's left is to plug in that formula. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And so I have negative 196.0. I'm going to leave my units off. I have made sure they all match. So I'm just not going to clutter my work with them. Minus 298, that's Kelvin, times the 0.1257. Again, that is kilojoules per Kelvin, so my Kelvin cancels. You want to plug that in. I'm over here. Watch your, watch your signs. You do have to watch your signs. This is um, simple math, but... <clears throat> you really have to be careful with that simple math. So I've got negative 196 minus 298 times 0.1275, or how about 0.1257. You need to be plugging this in with me to make sure you're getting the same answer. I get negative 233.4586. If I look at all the answers, they're rounded to the first decimal place. You want to pay attention. If you're typing in an answer, pay attention to how many decimal places or sig figs it tells you to go to. And so my correct answer is negative 
0.5 if we round it, and that is kilojoules. Again, negative delta G we're expecting because this is spontaneous.